think, and this was one of the theories of my book that arose from experience. Um, if you have the luck to meet someone younger when you're in your twenties, ideally, um, it's good because first of all, growing together, uh, we, we have, there's it's still this notion that you must be a fully formed individual before yeah. you can trust yourself, especially as a woman, you trust yourself to be in a relationship with a man and another person and not lose yourself. Like this is a big theme, you know, that um, to this day. And what we found was actually meeting very young. We were way more flexible with each other, you know, and we could in the end sort of grow together, you know, like those, when you see like a Benjamina plant or two trees that eventually grow and sort of merge into one thicker tree. Yeah. So I've always felt that there was that, that, that if we'd met when we were older and a little more rigid in our ways, that would have been a lot harder. Um, it also allowed me again, to my surprise to have children sooner rather than later. And that was his idea that I was 27. We'd been married for two years. I got married at 25. He was at three years older than me. Um, and he said, uh, First of all, his mother was sick. She had been sick for many years. And so he had a much more sense of time hanging over him. Yeah. And then he just looked at me one day. He said, I don't want to be an old dad. Yeah. And that, had, that just cut me to the core. I thought, he's so right. Like, do I want to be a, I mean, quietly between ourselves, we look at people our age who are, you know, getting remarried and the man suddenly has a, 18 month old in the house. And we, we would just want to blow our brains out. Like if yeah. that were happening to us at this stage of life, <laughs> but grandchildren, yes, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'd love those. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, but you know, but he, that sense of when he said that, so we had, I thought, okay. So we, we had our first child and his mother was alive for the first eight months of her life, but she died. I felt always incredibly glad we had done that when we did. But you do you suddenly it's a very um, it's a very freeing thing because when you become a parent, all from the outside looking in, it just looks negative, right? Oh my mm. God, your life is no longer yourselves. You can't just go out and do what you want to do. But the most profound thing a child, one of the most profound things a child does to you is it takes you out of yourself. Mm -hmm. You stop thinking about yourself all the time. You 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 are you 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 are no longer first. You know, you're not putting yourself first. You're putting someone else first. And as scary as that sounds, it has an incredibly liberating quality to it that makes both you and, in my case, my husband grow up a lot in a in a positive way, um, in a more expansive way. You become a bigger person, not a smaller person. And and you know, the, the diaper years are short. <laughs> so it, and as a woman giving birth younger, it allowed me by the time I was in my mid thirties to really be able to do like my mother, a lot more things than I might've had I had babies, you know, starting at 35 or whatever. So just understanding how, um, and that, and that, and then that helps down the road that this idea that you are growing together, that everything you do, uh, I think it was his father who once said to us, you had to think of a marriage, your marriage as a separate entity from everything else. So there was you, there was him, there were your kids, there was the family, and then there was a marriage. And the marriage was like a kid, and you had to tend to that marriage, that if anything was threatening the marriage, and I mean on small scale ways, like if mom has to get up one more time in the night, she's going to kill someone, you know, that, yeah. that, um, how do we, how do we help you through that? That, that you, and, and that's affecting our relationship. And that's that. It, it, so we've always tended to the marriage as its own thing um, and made sure that both of us are happy at any given moment. So if I see him going through stress or he sees me going through stress, we help each other. Um, and, and, and that's, and, and we, and, and when there have been real times of difficulty, uh, you know, we, you put the marriage first because if the marriage, if the marriage isn't the first priority, everything else fails. So 
if, if, and what I noticed too, is when people today, a lot have kids and it's true when we were having kids, like kids become all consuming kids take precedence over the marriage. The kids take precedence over everything. And that's, um, that's going to explode. Um, you know, the kids are important, but the marriage has to come first. And if the kids are blowing up the marriage, then you need to sit down and talk. <laughs>